Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to all of you for being here. This is an important topic. We're going through a difficult time in our country, something that we've never experienced in quite the same way. It's important for people to have confidence in being able to go back to their places of work, uh, back to school. And in order for those to run, who run our schools and our businesses to do that, and they want to know exactly what the risks to them will be, medically, economically, and otherwise. It's essential that we not forget in this moment the structural separation of powers that's found in our Constitution, particularly the vertical separation of powers that is embodied in the principle we call federalism. The notion that most of our laws apply at the state and local level. There are few laws that, by their very nature, need to be federal because of their necessarily and constitutionally national nature. The fact that we might like a particular policy doesn't make it federal. The fact that we might like a particular policy a lot or deem it essential still doesn't make it appropriate for federal determination. And so if we set this aside, we'll be doing significant violence to our constitutional structure. It's important to remember that here also because what caused a shutdown, what caused people to shelter in place or required individuals to stay at home was not made at the national level. These decisions were made at the state and the local level and appropriately so. And so with, with those people making those decisions, every one of those decisions involves a trade-off, a, a set of considerations involving a complex matrix of health and safety requiring people to uh, understand the fact that uh, there, there is no trade-off that's easy here. If we order everyone to stay at home indefinitely, that has costs not just in economic terms, but also in terms of human lives, uh, given what we know about who's going untreated for certain medical conditions. Well, my point is this, when these decisions are made, either to direct people to stay at home or to tell them it's safe to go out, those have significant public policy ramifications. Tort law has always been a creature of the states. It is not a creature of the federal government. As part of the calculus for moving forward, uh, uh, Gary Herbert, the governor of my state of Utah, signed a law providing businesses with extensive protection from COVID-related civil liability unless the tort in question was, quote, caused by the gross negligence, reckless misconduct, or intentional infliction of harm, close quote. If other state leaders choose to provide for their businesses, uh, and choose to provide their own people in their own states with similar protections, they may do so. But the fact that we may like or dislike that policy doesn't make it appropriate for federal legislation. So where then in all of this can the federal government play a role? And how can it do so without encroaching on federalism? Well, one possibility is uh, something that could be found in allowing for minimal diversity jurisdiction in federal courts. By establishing early COVID-related federal precedents, we can provide a liability roadmap helping businesses and states as they navigate any potential reopening. I've long championed the idea that um, the ability to remove a case from state court to federal court based on diversity jurisdiction should be expanded, uh, 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 allowing for removal in diversity jurisdiction even with minimal diversity. That is, even where not every uh, plaintiff is uh, residing in a different state than every defendant. Federal courts should have jurisdiction over lawsuits where any litigant from one state and an opposing litigant any opposing litigant is from another state. And in 2019, I introduced a bill to do just that, the Federal Court Access Act. Professor Vladek, uh, do you agree that modifying the removal statute so that federal courts can hear civil liability cases involving citizens of different states would help businesses better navigate the legal risks of reopening and operating during the COVID-19 health emergency? Well, uh, already, uh, diversity cases can be removed provided that the defendant is not a resident of the, uh, of the form state. And so um, there have been other waivers of complete diversity, particularly the, uh, the CAFA statute that was passed years ago. 
I don't think there's a constitutional violation of getting to minimal diversity, um, but no diversity would be a problem if there's no federal question. Okay, what about in diversity jurisdiction cases? If we were to supplant or, or supplement the substantive state law of the host state to the extent necessary to provide a degree of uh, protection for businesses. Could we do that? In other words, post Erie v. Tompkins, there is no federal common law. That's but correct. Would we uh, constitutionally be capable, if we chose, to supplement the, the, the forum state's substantive law to that degree necessary to create a safe harbor for COVID-19? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. And I think that would be unconstitutional because uh, both both for federalism grounds, I don't think the Commerce Clause would allow you to do it. Um, and I think there's serious due process problems for Congress wiping away liability laws without some other form of uh, substitute protection. Um, if you look at my testimony, I lay out what I think are the constitutional limits, largely imposed by the court in its more recent federalism cases, including NFIB versus Sebelius. I just don't see a basis for Commerce Clause jurisdiction to basically wipe away state court standards without substituting uh, some sort of robust federal program instead. Okay. I, I, I see I'm, I'm out of time, and, and um, I, I'd love to talk to you more about this sometime, Professor. I, I'm, not sure, um, I'm not sure what the right answer is. It seems to me that if we were to do this in a way that modifies diversity jurisdiction. I'm not sure we have to rely on the Commerce Clause for that. I think we've got authority to deal with diversity jurisdiction separately. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I ask you? Uh, sorry. Go. Cornyn, Senator Cornyn is going to ask that. Okay. 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 Right. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you.